This is going to be the first vlog with this new camera, my Canon R6, my first mirrorless camera, which I only got recently. And today I'm going to be photographing red squirrels here at the feeding station in Snay's home in the Yorkshire Dales. Now I'm going to try and go through some different aspects of this camera, photographing the squirrels. I'm going to talk about uh, some of the settings, some of the capabilities this camera has, um, maybe to do with exposure, but I think mostly to do with focus. This is classic Yorkshire Dales weather. If you live in Yorkshire, you'll probably know what I mean. But there's a few bright spells around, so it might get a little bit better. It's very dark at the moment. Um, I'm currently on AV, aperture priority, and I've got a minimum shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, widest aperture, F4, and auto ISO. The only reason it's not on manual, which is often a good idea, is just because it's so dark um, that if I set manual, the ISO might max out and it won't go any higher. So if you use after priority, then I know uh, that it doesn't really matter. I'll always get a good exposure. Also, I've got back button set up, dual back button focus. Uh, the star button is my eye autofocus, so the animal eye autofocus tracking mode. Uh, so when I engage that, it's trying to look for an eye, which you won't find one at the moment because there isn't one there. So it's kind of dancing around. And then I've got my AF on button, the bigger button um, that is operating a single fo focus, actually I think it's a spot, I think I've got it on a spot focus, just one small focus point and that's just operating like a traditional uh, servo autofocus. So I'm going to try the eye autofocus and if I have problems with that, if it's not working, then I'm going to switch to the single point, single point, single point autofocus. Squirrel. There's one right there now, coming into the feeding station. Oh, there's a pheasant. Oh, yeah, he's on top of the feeder. Just gone in to get some food. That's good. Good sign. It just jumped. It just jumped out of the feeder. That was that was mental. I've seen a few squirrels already since I arrived. Well, I definitely saw two. Uh, one was one was coming onto the feeding station, and the other one was actually behind me, just kind of running around. So that's a good sign so far. So this is the 500 mm f/4 lens, and it's the Mark One version. And I've got this attached to the R6 with the with the adapter, the what they call it RF EF adapter, uh, which enables you to do that. So I'm going to be testing out the focus today. So far, it just seems absolutely fine. And when I've tested it before, I can't see any issues with the focus. It seems really fast and responsive. Um, I've got the stabilizer switched off which is just standard practice with this Mark I lens. Um, I think it's fine with newer lenses, but I found with this older lens, if I switched it on, on a tripod, it actually got, I got shakier pictures because I think it tries to create its own movement. Uh, so I just know from experience that it works better switched off. At the moment, I'd say I've probably got about half a dozen squirrels, like four, five, maybe six red squirrels, pretty much all at the same time. And there's so much burying behavior today, which is just fantastic. I've managed to get some of that on video, and I think I've got some stills as well. So much burying behavior where they're taking food and then they're going off to a specific place and burying it underground. And that's fantastic if you get those pictures because not only is it great to get that kind of behavior, a bit of action, but also it's just going to slow them down you know they're constantly on the move they stop to bury something then hopefully they're going to have like one or two seconds where they're going to stop and maybe do a nice pose for you So one of the things I'm not sure about is whether to use the same technique of putting my hand over the lens. Now this is good standard technique with a DSLR because it basically dampens vibration. Uh, you just put your one hand over, just maybe slightly push down and it helps to stop vibration that occurs uh, from the camera through the lens. Well the thing is with a mirrorless camera, if you're shooting electronic shutter then nothing's moving so I don't really see how that would make any difference because there shouldn't be any vibration. It might be different if it's using first curtain or mechanical so I'll try and test that out in the next few weeks but in terms of electronic shutter I don't really see how doing that 
sh you know shouldn't be making too much difference unless maybe it's just still good technique just for stability maybe it's just going to help with overall stability that was very very interesting indeed then i was tracking one squir squirrel well just following it not really focusing and then it came onto the path and it stopped briefly and i was following it and i basically pressed the wrong button so i pressed the AF on just for the normal single point autofocus tracking and i was kind of on its body i wasn't on its head so i've got a couple of shots and they're either not sharp or the head's not sharp um, because I just pressed the wrong button because I'm not used to this camera so if I had pressed the eye to focus I think it would have just been straight onto the eye and I'd have got that So I just tried some video and the camera just absolutely just couldn't cope in this situation, it couldn't hack it. And that's not to say that the video on this camera is bad, I don't think it is. I've done some filming of birds in flight recently and I was really, really impressed with the tracking capability. Uh, I thought I got some really, really good footage, so it's not bad. It's just this situation, I've got really, really low light levels and it's really a mixture of very fast squirrels and this terrain as I watch one doing exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so they're already very, very fast, difficult to photograph and film, but this terrain, one minute they're kind of there and then they'll disappear behind something. So they'll go behind a mound of grass, fallen tree trunk log, grasses, whatever it is. So they're constantly moving sort of in and out and the autofocus just can't keep up with that. Now, like the birds in flight, if you get it on there and locked, it's just tracking it, it's absolutely fine, no problems. But here it just couldn't cope in this situation so what I ended up doing was actually trying to track them as best I could and then just using manual so as soon as the squirrel stopped you know hopefully it's going to stop for a brief second as they sometimes do just to look up I just quickly uh, snap in the manual focus ring and get it into focus and that was kind of working okay so This is one thing that's just confused me a bit and it's to do with auto ISO. So maybe I need to change the settings or maybe I just need to get used to it this way. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but basically I've got auto ISO and I can see that in the viewfinder when I'm looking there. If I press this button, I can see it's on auto ISO. So I could change it to what I want manually, but it is definitely now selected auto ISO. But if I use the dial on the back, it now changes the ISO and I can see it changing and I've done a few test shots and it's basically changing the ISO manually. Um, but then if you press the button again, it seems to go back. So it's as if like that back button is like a manual override of the ISO, which is quite clever, I guess, but it might be a bit too confusing for me. If you are subscribed to my channel and you wanna make sure that you see all my videos, then make sure you go to the bell icon and then select all notifications and YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video. Right. Now, my thoughts on the eye autofocus, the eye animal tracking focus system. 
Um, I think it's just one of those things where you just need to use just a bit of common sense with it. It's not going to be perfect all the time. I never expect it to be perfect or infallible. What I've learned today, specifically with the red squirrels in this location here at Snay's home, is it, I think it's like with a lot of things, if it can see the eye and it's fairly clear, then it's going to snap onto it pretty well. I've seen it do it with birds when I've tested it out. It's been excellent. When a squirrel has stopped in a clear patch, the eye autofocus was just straight on. And even sometimes when they're running around, kind of around those distractions, the eye autofocus has still got on the, the eye or the head of the squirrel pretty well. The problem is when you get those distractions here in this habitat, whether it's in front of the red squirrel or behind it, then the focus struggles. Now, <laughs> it's so distracting. Um, now, I'm going to expect that anyway. Um, but I have a little feeling that the eye autofocus actually is worse in that situation than a normal focus. Uh, I'm not 100% on that and I need to test it out, but just from today's shooting, it feels like, I guess because it's trying to find an eye all the time and it's constantly trying to latch onto things and it feels like it's, you know, it's focusing on the wrong thing more than ordinary, an ordinary autofocus. This has been a fantastic day. I've had so much fun here photographing the red squirrels. Uh, I've learned a lot more about the camera. I'm largely impressed with the R6, the focusing capability, and the lens has performed brilliantly. I don't really see any issues with the 500 millimeter, this EF lens and the adapter. It's a difficult situation, so it's tested. It's tested everything today, but the lens in general, I think it's focused really, really well, and if anything, maybe slightly faster than what I have it on my 1DX. If you are interested in coming here to Snay's home to this uh, feeding station viewing area for the red squirrels uh, I'll put a link somewhere on the screen I'll definitely put one in the description box below uh, it's not for, far from Hawes in Wensleydale in the Yorkshire Dales. If you're not subscribed please do me the honour of subscribing click on my face. Thanks for watching I'll see you next time.